Africa. It's been called the birthplace of humanity, the land where our ancestors took their first steps. Yet only recently revealed as the home of a vast tropical civilization. Cities and kingdoms once spread across the continent, then vanished, leaving barely a trace. What happened to this great achievement? Professor Jared Diamond has set out to explore the great patterns of human history. It's a journey that has taken him from the jungles of New Guinea to the snow-capped peaks of Peru. His quest? To understand why one people, Europeans, have conquered so much of the world. Diamond argues that the roots of European triumph stretch back thousands of years and rest on the power of geography. Geography gave Europeans the most productive crops and animals on the planet. And these allowed them to develop guns, germs, and steel. Three great forces of conquest that have shaped human history. Now, Diamond is setting out on the last stage of his quest to discover what happened when guns, germs, and steel came to Africa. And to ask what role these forces still play. But Diamond's journey will test much more than theories. It will also test the man himself. Class 19D South African Railways steam locomotive, built Glasgow, Scotland, 1932. It is a testament to technology and human achievement. A tool built to carve a path across a continent. A lasting symbol of the triumph of European guns, germs, and steel. This engine and its tracks of steel will carry Jared Diamond through the story of Africa. It is a tale with its roots in ambition and greed, the peoples of Europe reaching out beyond their native lands in a quest for global conquest. As Europeans expanded around the world, they conquered other people, they built railroads, they developed rich societies modeled on Europe. They had done this successfully in North America and South America and Australia. And then they arrived in Africa and it looked as if the same thing was starting all over again. But Africa would be different. A place of dangers and secrets hidden from these foreign invaders. The first European settlers arrived in southern Africa in the mid-1600s. They landed here, in the Cape of Good Hope, at the southernmost tip of the continent. They quickly established themselves in this new land, laying out farms, planting wheat and barley, ranching cattle and sheep. This may sound strange, but it's from ordinary agriculture like this that my theory of guns, germs, and steel arose. My quest began more than 30 years ago on a trip to Papua New Guinea, when I began to try to understand why the people there lived so differently from Europeans and Americans. 
The beginnings of the answer, I realized, depended on farming. New Guineans had only a few native crops that they could grow and no native farm animals. While my ancestors, even 10,000 years ago, had been blessed with an abundance of domestic plants and animals. Over the centuries, this had given them a huge advantage that let them develop cities, nations, and even colonies abroad. But Southern Africa is 5,000 miles from Europe. How was it possible for the settlers to import European crops and animals to such a distant part of the world? As much as skill, it came down to good fortune. Geography had dealt the settlers an immensely lucky hand. They had stumbled across one of the few parts of the Southern Hemisphere that feels just like Europe. Because the Cape and Europe lie at a similar latitude or distance from the equator. And this means that the temperature and climate of these widely separated regions are almost exactly the same. The Europeans were able to establish prosperous farms and settlements, properties now owned by their descendants, people like Hempes Dutois. So your family has been here for centuries on this land. How do you feel about the land yourself then? Well, I've always loved the land since childhood days, and it comes, agriculture has been in our family for so many generations. Tell me about the history of this farm. Well, the, the land was occupied in 1683. Uh -huh. I mean, that was only a couple of years after the first settlers came to the Cape. Uh -huh. But settlers like the Dutois knew that this was not an empty land. Even today, their farms turn up evidence of the Cape's original inhabitants, a people known as the Khoisan. Oh, this is interesting. This, yeah. is, a, this is from the Stone Age. Oh. Um, prior to the occupation of this land in 1683 by the settlers, this land was most probably um, occupied by Khoisan people. Uh -huh. These were the tools they used to to scrape the skins when they tanned the skins. Mm, beautiful. And it was, you can see how, how nicely it fits into your hand. Yeah. With the arrival of Europeans, these native peoples were driven from their land. But they also faced an invisible and even more devastating agent of conquest a force Diamond has identified as one of the greatest in human history, germs. Realizing the importance of farming led me to the next big surprising discovery of guns, germs, and steel. Domesticated animals had given Europeans one advantage of which they were completely unaware. By living in close proximity to their livestock, they had become infected with viruses and germs of those animals, which evolved into diseases of humans. Through exposure over centuries, Europeans had developed some resistance to those diseases. But as Europeans spread around the world, they encountered peoples who didn't have that same resistance, and who then fell victim to devastating outbreaks of infection especially of smallpox. In the Americas, millions of native people died from this one disease. And here in the Cape, it wrought the same havoc on the Khoisan peoples. Through their farming and their germs, Europeans had established a firm foothold in the southern tip of Africa. Now, they look to expand. In 